Hey y'all, it's Beth, and welcome to my very first 24 hour readathon. So, a little while back, I announced I was going to be hosting a readathon called On the Hour, which is a 24 hour readathon done via the timer method. And I invited you guys to join me. We have a Discord, we have reading sprints coming up. It's gonna be a fun time, and I'm gonna vlog it. And that is what you're seeing today, my friends, is me attempting to read for 24 hours and trying to fit it into four four days. That is the goal. That's 24 hours, four days. Matt's not mathing. Listen, I have little kids. I have a needy dog. I have a husband. I have a house to tend to. I need my sleep. There is no way I could take 24 hours and just read straight. It's not gonna happen. So we're doing the timer method, which is anytime you read, you start your timer. When you're not reading, you stop your timer. And then you just keep doing that until you have read for 24 hours. And it could take two, three, four days. We're gonna try to do maximum of four days, which means we need to get minimum of like six hours a day. I, well, I guess if you do like 10 hours the first day, you can, all, you know what I mean? Like you're gonna have to read. You're gonna have to get some good reading time in there. So we're gonna do round one. Buckle up, buttercup. Yeah, I should be telling myself that actually, not you, because you're just sitting down chilling, watching, probably eating a bag of Twizzlers. I don't know your life. I hope you're doing that. I hope you're living your best. But let's go ahead and talk about the books that I'm reading for this readathon. There are no prompts for this readathon. There is, however, a buddy read simply because when I join other people's readathons, my favorite part about the readathon, with the exception of like the community aspect, which we do have that because I opened up the Discord where we're all chatting and stuff. But but it's a buddy read. I love a good buddy read. And we do have a buddy read that everyone voted for. And then I have a few other books put to the side. Now, let me just stick a pin in that really quick because I do want to say I am not a fast reader. I am not a fast reader. I see some people over here, they read like a book in two, three hours. I could not. I'm not a fast reader. So I've only got four, four books set aside. If I happen to impress myself and get through those four books in less than 24 hours, then we'll pick another one, but I have a feeling it's probably going to be like a three book situation. Let me show you the four books that I'm reading. So our buddy read is The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchison. This is a crime thriller and I hear it is very Criminal Minds-esque gives that vibe, which I am here for. It's one of my favorite shows. This is the first book in a series. It's quite short, which is good. <laughs> when you're in a readathon, you know. And then I have a book that I've already started, and that is Funny Story by Emily Henry. I am only 84 pages into this book, so not too far. I'm also reading this one physically, and I am really loving it. This is going to be the first book that I pick up today for the readathon. And the other two books that I chose... Anyway, those are the four books that I have planned for the next four days for this 24-hour readathon. I'm really excited. If you missed the first round, I am doing a second round in June. I'll link the Discord down below if you want to go ahead and join that so you can know, you know, you can be in the know when we do the next round. You can be in the voting poll. You can be, you know, whatever. Yeah, so there's that. I'm going to go fix me a little snack -a rooney and we will get started reading Funny Story. That's going to be my first because I'm really loving it and it has five star vibes. Five star vibes. The main male character, top tier, his name is Miles. Let me tell you really quick what Funny Story is about. So Funny Story follows a woman named Daphne who is engaged to this guy named Peter. He probably should be named Daphne but it's an, it's, his name is Peter. I guess he isn't that grown. <laughs> so he's engaged, <laughs> she's engaged to Peter and it's his bachelor party weekend. And so him and his friends go out and they do the thing. One of his friends is a woman and it's been his lifelong best friend. Her name is Petra. She goes on this bachelor party, right? Cause it's his best friend. He comes home the next day in the morning hours. And um, he's like, so while we were on this bachelor party, Petra confessed that she loved me and I think I love her back and we kind of fucked. Um, and so you have like a week to get out. So good luck. Because she has moved to the state, knows nobody, has no friends there. It's his house, his name. So she's like, I barely can get by and you're making me move out <laughs> in a week. <laughs> What? So then she gets a knock at the door, answers the door, and it's this guy, and he's like been weepy and upset and whatever. Lo and behold, it's Petra's 
boyfriend that they've been living together they've been dating for a while and he's like I don't know what to do like I love her and she's gone and da -da -da -da. and and Daph was like hold up how many rooms does your apartment have and he's like two so she moves in with him they become roommates and now they've been living together for like six weeks well they get an invitation the nerve of Peter and Petra they get an invitation to their wedding six weeks first off how dare second off Miles is like you know what let's make them jealous let's act like we are having the best time ever and we're dating and we're so in love and let's just make them jealous and so that's what they do and so they're fake dating and let me just tell you what Miles is so funny to me he is so funny the humor in Emily Henry's books it's not like flat-out humor it's not this wouldn't be like labeled as a comedy book a funny book at the library but I am giggling my little booty off I am having a good time I'm enjoying this and I cannot wait to continue on. I'm gonna like go make me a little snanky snack and then we're gonna get 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 going on our 24 hours. <laughs> lol <laughs> at my crochet mess let's not look at it i have way too many projects going on right now but i do have to pause because my kids have officially woken up we're not even an hour into the readathon i did make some good progress in the book I think it's good. I started at page 84 and now I'm at page 104 and I did want to update really quick because I found out what she's counting down to. So at the beginning of every chapter it says how many days left until she can leave and at the beginning of the book we don't really know like why. Well she explains that she has this countdown of how many days because she's hosting a readathon. <laughs> She's hosting a readathon for the library that she works at. They live in a really small town and this library never has like enough funds, especially for books. And the kids at the library are really close to her and she likes to choose books that she knows these specific kids would really love, but they have a really tight budget. And so she wanted to put on this readathon that they stay up all night reading, doing games, whatever, to make money for this library. So that's why she hasn't moved yet yet because now that Peter has broken up with her she has nothing there her mom's not there she has no friends there like she literally has nothing there sparks are starting to fly though between Miles and her I just I really love these two characters I feel like they're just so real <laughs> Even though they're fictional, they just feel so real. And they're funny, but like not in like an obvious way. I don't know. I just, I really love it. I really love em Emily Henry's writing, especially with her last two books. So with Happy Place and this book. I do want to go back and reread Beach Read, Book Lovers, and People We Meet on Vacation. Because I listened to those via audio. And I don't think I gave them a full chance. Like I did Happy Place and now Funny Story. If that makes sense. I find I don't really connect like there is a disconnect with characters when I listen to an audiobook which is fine when it comes to like mysteries and thrillers and things like that because you're not needing to have like this big connection with the characters but for a romance to do what a romance is set out to do I feel like the connection needs to be there you know what I'm saying so just for me my personal preference I really want to go back and reread those first few books to see because I honestly don't even remember anything about them <laughs> So that also kind of says a lot. But anyway, I'm going to go make pancakes because my kids are now finally awake. They're hungry. They're, you know, they're getting a little hangry, if you will. We have an Alani new for some much needed energy. We're going to need to get through this. <sighs> yes, if that doesn't speak to your soul. Had to switch to my glasses because I don't know what it is with the contacts. I got my glasses and contacts the same day, same eye doctor, everything. And when I wear my contacts, it's like my eyes have trouble focusing on things. Definitely need to go back to the eye doctor and figure out what is going on. So we're wearing our glasses today. Sorry for the reflection. It is what it is, girly pop. <laughs> So let's go ahead and dive back on in to our book. I'm just, I didn't want to leave this world, but you know, duty is called. Let's start our timer. We are at 23 hours and 20 three minutes and 33 seconds. This is probably going to be the most Professor Umbridge thing you've seen all week. It's okay. <laughs> 
I spilled my drink all over the front of my shirt and I was like this is just a sign from the universe that it is okay to get back into my jammies and that's exactly what I did. Though I do have reading sprints later this evening so I'm gonna have to put back on clothes but nevertheless we shall enjoy it while we can. Let me just tell you what I remember back in the day when I can just sit on my couch and zone out and read my book for five hours and blink and then my house still look the same you know because the only person that was there was me on the couch versus now I was only in here I mean I feel like I've been in here all day I've been in here for a couple hours reading because this is my reading room this is where I read <laughs> This is why I'm always in here filming clips and I go out there to go answer the door because pizza's here. My kids, <laughs> if I was brave enough to show you, my kids have destroyed my li There is a literal farm set up in my living room. I'm talking farm animals, unicorns, Donald Duck, Daisy Duck, like any type of animal possible that my children own is currently living in my living room. Floor, where art thou? Anyway, we're gonna let them continue being kids and we're gonna read until 3.30 and then from 3.30 to 5 I will get dressed, <laughs> clean up the mess, get them situated and then hop on to sprints. Can we finish funny story today? That is the question. We'll see because right now we're only at 2 babe and it is already 2 p.m. <laughs> Wow, that just puts everything into perspective for me right now. So I'm getting ready to do the reading sprint and I do have 20 more hours left to go in five minutes. So we are four hours into this readathon and I'm not quite done with my book just yet. I do have a little over 100 pages left to go, so I'm hoping I can finish them in these reading sprints. I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this book. I will tell you right here and right now, every single character is just top tier, okay? I feel like with Happy Place, which I love, Happy Place is like one of my all-time favorite books, but I heard a lot of people Sorry, I've heard a lot of people complain about the side characters being rather boring and I think that little Miss Emily Henry must have saw those reviews and really took it to heart because in this one, babe, they are top tier. They are top tier. We have Miles who's... Uh, 10 bucks says it's my husband. It's my husband. <laughs> He's gonna bring me home a snicker bar. Listen, okay? <laughs> Where, what was I even talking about? So we have Miles, the male main character. Love him, the fake dating, they both, they both are in love. I don't care what you say. <laughs> and then we have his sister, Julia, who is also fan-fucking-tastic. We have the friend, Ashley. Everything is just going wrong in this clip. So we have our main character, first off, Daphne, right? Daphne has never really had like true, true friends. Even when she thought they were her friends, they weren't really her friends. And when Peter broke up with her, it's kind of like all of her friends kind of went, you know, with Peter, even like one of her, what she thought was closest friends. And so she has also traveled around her entire life. Her mom has always went from job to job to job to job. Four months they live in South Dakota, three months they live in Texas, like that kind of thing, like they traveled. And so she never really could form friendships or relationships or anything with anybody. And so she's became this closed off secret is what they kind of refer to her as. And so now she's like trying to learn how to open up and how to make friends and how to form this life, you know, instead of being a we, she can be an I. Instead of we like having oysters for dinner she can be like I love having sushi because she's always like codependent on someone else first it was her mom and now it's because her mom and her are also very close so first it was her mom then it was like Peter and whatever and so now she's just trying to figure out how to live life as independent but also falling in love at the same time I am starting the reading sprints I'm really hoping I can finish this book during the reading sprints it's gonna be quite eventful because my husband you know like listen <laughs> Before I got with my husband, I didn't know what a bowling link was. I never knew that that was like a thing. And then I got with him and he's like, yeah, I'm in a bowling league and his dad's in a bowling league and whatever. So he's in a bowling league and he has like assigned you days and stuff that he goes to every week to do it. That's where he's at tonight. Ever since then though, it's like in so many books, they talk about bowling leagues and I'm like, how did I not know bowling leagues were this big of a thing? Even Abby in 
NCIS is in a bowling league. So anyway, he's off doing that. I don't know. I got off this side tangent and I don't know where I was going. The train has been derailed. Just finished the reading sprints. I made good progress in the book. I have 30 pages left to go. I've cried twice. It's it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good, good one. I'm just gonna, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to say this right here right now is I should have brought my tripod in here because I have zero upper body strength. So we're gonna have to make this quick. Number one, I finished Emily Henry's book, A Funny Story. Number two, I gave it five stars. I gave it five stars. Listen, Linda, this is the type of romance book that I love. It's like a blend of literary fiction and romance together without being like smutty. You know what I mean? Without having ridiculous pet names. If you like a new girl, I think you're gonna love this book. The end, end of story. <laughs> Is it my favorite Emily Henry book? I don't think so. I think Happy Place is still in that number one slot, but this is numero two, babe. Numero So Time check in and let me let my arm rest for a second. <laughs> okay, so I have 17 hours and 57 minutes left into this readathon. I don't think I'm going to be reading anything else tonight, but I'm going to charge my battery. Look at the dog hair. I'm gonna charge my battery just in case I decide to pick something up as I'm laying in bed, depending on how fast I go to sleep. If I do, I will start my timer. If I don't, I won't. So tomorrow is definitely gonna be an audiobook kind of day. I think I'm gonna to listen to the new Geneva Rose book because I do have the advanced listeners copy. I really hope that I enjoy it because I wanna buy it physically. The cover is my vibe. I love the cover, essentially. And yeah, so that is that, my friends. That is that. I will catch you guys on the flip side. What does that even mean, really? On the other side? On the other side of what? Not me bawling my eyes out <laughs> to this book. I started reading it this morning and I just couldn't stop. I'm 30% in. <laughs> and I'm having a hard time. <laughs> Things that went off the rail, it's fine. I shall not apologize for how I look. I feel like this is definitely something that I need to leave in the past. Because why are we apologizing for looking like ourselves, okay? I am not ugly, my friends. I am broke. <laughs> Anyway, I had every intention of waking up today, popping in an audiobook, and being so productive. I've done nothing. I just simply cannot be bothered. You know why? I got up this morning actually kind of early because Paul tells me bye every morning before he goes to work. And this morning I just couldn't fall back to sleep. So I was like, let me just lay on the couch, pull up my Kindle, and see if there's something on there that I want to just read for like an hour or two before I get my day started. And I started reading Reckless by Elsie Silver, and I could not stop. <laughs> I am 60% into this book and I probably cried for 40%. I have cried so much today, my throat hurts. I don't know why when I cry my throat hurts, but regardless. <laughs> I'm having a time and I never thought I would connect to a character as much as I have connected with Winter. That She has gone through many things that I myself have also gone through. It's wild because when I read book one, I did not like Winter at all, but I like Winter more than I like Summer. Yes, that's her sister's name. Their parents should be wrong for that and many more things. But in case you didn't know, I feel like everybody, if you've been in the book community, you've probably heard of the series. It's the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver. Reckless is the fourth book. So there's five books total and each book follows a different guy essentially. We have three brothers, the Eaton brothers, and then we have their best friend Jasper who's kind of lived with them off and on his whole life essentially. And then we have Theo who is a bull rider and Rhett, which is one of the brothers, is kind of like training him. He's his mentor because Theo's dad was Rhett's mentor. That's kind of how Theo is connected to the family. And our female main character is Winter, who is Summer's sister. And Summer is the female main character in book one, who is now engaged to Rhett. Okay. Anyway, so Reckless. We have Winter and Theo. At the beginning of this book, Winter is just now filing for divorce to her gross husband. She has gotten a part-time job in Chestnut Springs so she can be a little bit closer to her sister. And so she gets the nerve to call up her sister and she's like, hey, I'm on my way to Chestnut Springs. Can we stop and have like coffee or wine or something? And her sister's like, you know, we're about to have family dinner. Why don't you come on over to the ranch? 
and have dinner with us. And so she's like, okay, cool. So she's running out of gas and she pulls into this gas station and she looks over to the other pump and there's this really hot guy there, okay? The little cowboy man with his boots on and he notices her staring at him and so he's like, well, I'm gonna stare back. <laughs> And then she's like, okay, rude. And then so that, whatever. So then she like gets in her car and it's like in the middle of a snowstorm, essentially. And she's driving to the ranch and she's driving really slow. Old boy is behind her, Theo, the guy that she saw at the gas station, is behind her in his truck getting really pissed off because he's like, why is she driving so slow? And she keeps tapping on her brakes and like, annoying the heck out of him. And he's annoying her. And then lo and behold, they pull into the same driveway. <laughs> And they get out and they have this big old fight like in the driveway, this big old cat fight. And then they go inside and they kind of like banter with each other the entire evening. Well, it's time to go home in winter. She already can't drive on the snow. Like we saw that when she was driving there. And so Summer's like panicking and she's like, Theo, please follow her or whatever. So they wind up following each other to take her back to the hotel that she's staying at while she's in town working her like part-time shift and he's like but I'm staying at the same hotel as you <laughs> and she's like well let me go ahead and buy you a drink at the bar for you helping me get to this hotel safely so they go to the bar and they start talking the tequila is hitting they're taking shots 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 one thing leads to another they make they make a deal they write it out on this coaster to like a contract is what they call it where they have sex and then once the sex is done that's it they no longer they don't see each other anymore they don't talk to each other they don't tell anybody about this it's a one-time hit it and quit it one night stand okay also she has never once had an orgasm in her entire life doesn't know what it feels like and Thea's like I can guarantee you will not be saying that when I'm done we don't get to see that though because it's like they go into the elevator to go up to his room and it the next page it's like 18 months later so we don't get to see that then it's 18 months later and we do get to see like a little text thread and like email type voicemail situation where she tries to call Theo multiple times and leaves multiple voicemails and she even texts him to let him know hey I'm pregnant and you're the dad she gets a text back saying okay cool thanks for let me know and she's like pissed off doesn't see him again doesn't try to contact him anymore after that she doesn't tell anybody about it she just tells everybody else like I had a one night stand I don't remember who the dad is. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting to the, I'm getting to the stuff. I'm getting to the end of this. Okay. I'm not gonna, not the end of the book, but whatever. Anyway, so, so 18 months later, she now has a nine month old little girl and she, it's like, she's taking a break. She's getting a night off and she says the baby's with the babysitter with Harvey. <laughs> which I love. And she is going with the girls, Summer and Willa, and they're going to this little benefit that Rhett is putting on in town, and Theo just happens to be there. Just happens to be there. First time she has seen him since their one night stand. <sighs> My soul. <laughs> I was crying so hard on the couch this morning. The outside of my nose is on fire. Like it's raw from the snot, okay? And then there's so many other things in here that made me cry as well. There was a little spot where she was talking about how she's been doing this alone, but so many other people in her life have been helping her. And she mentioned Harvey and how Harvey brought over a family heirloom to her house for the baby. I was just bawling, you know, cause she, like her dad and her and her mom and her, they don't really click. So Harvey like stepped up. They don't have to because they're not, she's not kin to them. Her sister's marrying his son, but that's about it. You know what I mean? I just, I love Har Harvey so much. And Harvey's got a little boo thing in this book himself. Anyway, but there are so many other things in this book that I connect with on such a deep level. Winter was married prior and in this really horrible relationship with this really horrible man. And during this long relationship, they dealt with infertility and whatever. And she did get pregnant once and it ended pretty badly. And that's kind of the same thing that happened to me I was married prior to my husband now and um, for 10 years and we never I got married really young and we never could get pregnant and then we got pregnant once and it ended really badly and then never again as I'm going through my divorce same with winter as she's going through her divorce she meets Theo I met my current husband now and literally I swear to God all he had to do was breathe on me and I got pregnant <laughs> it's it's so oddly the same it's so much the same as me and then now she's dealing with the body issues because she was a lot thinner prior to having her baby and now she's not and she thinks that you know he thinks that she's gross looking and it's literally the same thing that I go through on the daily because I am definitely not the person I was prior to having kids and it's just such a mind fuck 
really it is and then there's so much other stuff too with like her family that is very similar to my family I have a sister and she's my half sister we were treated completely different as children there's so much in this book that I can relate to I was crying so hard all morning long to the point where when I did take a shower I was like I'm not even putting on makeup I'm not even gonna put in any effort because I have a feeling I'm gonna continue to cry so there is a big chance that I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this series in this vlog. I'm gonna go start a load of laundry. <laughs> so when my husband comes home, he's like, not like, um, well, I've already called him. He, he FaceTimed me earlier when he was on lunch. <laughs> and I was crying and he's like, you've gotta stop with those emotional books. <laughs> Um, it's so good. It's so weird how you can form this connection with the person that doesn't even exist. You know what I mean? I will say Heartless. Um, I keep looking over there because that's where the books are. I will say Heartless was my favorite with Willa and Cade. Unless something happens and I'm just like, huh? This is most likely going to be my favorite from the series. I don't want to like make this very bleak and tell you my life story. But what I do want is a Diet Coke. A, fr a fresh ice cold Diet Coke with a little packet of True Lime. Delicious. And I'm gonna continue reading. I'm also gonna start laundry because like, I gotta do something today. It's also very cloudy outside. And yes, I am in penguin pajamas. What about it? Oh wait, I wanted to show you where I'm at on my time. 13 hours and 44 minutes left in this readathon. So I finished. Reckless by Elsie Silver. I'm coming in here so I can add two more rows to my book blanket for the two books that I finished this vlog. You remember when I said that I was gonna read Hopeless right after? I've changed my mind. I said that before the smut started happening and I know there's smut in Elsie Silver, but I forgot how much. <laughs> and I just, at one point I was like, enough slices. So I'm definitely not gonna be picking up Hopeless next. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the Buddy Read, which is the Butterfly Garden on audio while I cook dinner and stuff this evening because I finished Reckless. <laughs> and um, oh, let me show you my hours before I forget. And if you're thinking like, why are you so wet? Because I was just crying again on the couch, you know? It just, it was a very emotional book for me. I have 11 hours and 37 minutes left. So, not too shabby. Why? Look, if I look at my phone, there's no blinking light. But if I put it up to the camera, does it not look like there's a blinking light at the top? What in the heck? Anyway, so I finished Reckless and I'm giving it four, four and a half stars. The thing is, is I wish there was more to the relationship. I wish it wasn't so fast and it kind of felt pretty easy. Like they just kind of fell into place. They fell into mom and dad happily ever after. A little tough happened, back at it again. And um, I just missed the tension and the angst. So I'm gonna keep Heartless as my numero uno, but Reckless is really close behind. I have little speckles all over my glasses from tears. So as I was in the couch crying in the club, tears coming down, you know, <gasps> I licked my lips and I tasted some salty tears, okay? And then it got me thinking, I was like, tears are salty and sweat is salty. Do they both come from the same water source in your body? And like, why is it appropriate for people to say like they lick their tears, but if you lick your sweat, I don't do that. <laughs> But you know what I mean? I mean, like, yeah, sometimes I, like, when I get in the shower after a workout, that sounds really gross. I really hope you know what I mean. I don't just walk around licking sweaty people. I mean, you're not good. <laughs> Do they come from the same source and they're just coming out at different spots? Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> Such a random uh, conversation. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't find the audiobook for Butterfly Garden and get started on that while I make dinner and stuff. Should be pretty short because it is a pretty short book. So maybe I can finish another book tonight before I go to bed. Depends on how, depends on how many hours it is. I need to go find that out. Figure that out. Hey. Ready your wands. I swear one day I'm gonna be able to come on here and wear my hair down and not resemble Professor Snape. Think twice before you get bangs, my friends. Think twice because they grow out takes forever. That's why I've been doing these weird little hairdos tie back situations because I just can't handle it. Anyway, welcome to day three of the readathon, and I am a little over 10 hours away from completing the 24 hour challenge. I have 10 hours and 30 ish minutes. Hang on, I'll show you proof. So 10 hours, 30 minutes, and 26 seconds left into the readathon. Come on. Come on. Okay. 
10 hours and 30 minutes and 26 seconds left into the readathon. It says if I start it right now, it will finish at 9.44 p.m. tonight. So I'm not starting it right now. I am getting ready for reading sprints though. They're happening in about 45 minutes. Well, I did read for about an hour-ish last night, and by reading, I mean I listened to an audiobook. I started Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchison, and so essentially, this one gives me, like, Criminal Minds vibes, but not, like, in the, like, BAU sense of things, not in the profiler sense of things. Just the case itself is something that I could see being an episode on Criminal Minds. So in this book, I'm not too far in, but in this book we have two FBI agents that are questioning a girl named Maya because a bunch of girls or women were rescued from this garden this abandoned mansion had and in this garden there was a bunch of butterflies and these butterflies are actually abducted women Mm -hmm, that have intricate like butterflies tattooed on their back. Apparently it got really dark. I haven't got there yet, but they're interviewing this chick because one, they need to identify the women that actually have survived so that they can like tell their families. Two, uh, what exactly went down there at the mansion, okay? This main girl, Maya, which Maya isn't even her real name. Maya is her given name by the gardener, which is the abductor. And she's being a little... Dara St. Biatch. I don't like her. She's very rude to the cops. Anytime like other girls are questioned, they don't talk to the FBI agents. They just look at Maya. Something sus with Maya. So we also get the perspective of Maya. Oh my God, you scared me. Can I help you? Oh, good morning, Daniel. <laughs> Daughter, what was I saying? I don't remember what I was saying, but was it at like the perspective of Maya? We get the perspective of Maya as she's like brought there in her first day and like her whatever. I don't know. It's just very like weird right now. I'm not very far in the book at all. I think the book itself has no chapters, but I'm listening to the audiobook on Audible and it is broken down in chapters. And according to Audible, I'm on chapter four and I still have a long way to go. Six hours to go listening at the speed that I'm listening to. So I will update you more when I learn more without spoiling you, of course. Anyway, I'm going to set up for my live. I'm going to listen to the audiobook while I do reading sprints and crochet at the same time because we are a multitasking girly. But first, I need to pop on the Lani. Juicy peach and, of course, a brewmate to keep it cold, you know? Keep it cold, especially if you're a sipper which I'm a sipper. This will last me a few hours. This is the blanket that I'm going to work on today during sprints. I'm going to call this my sunset blanket because the colors just remind me of a sunset. I don't know. Not like in this particular order. I'm using this five millimeter crochet hook and this is the brand of the yarn that I'm using. It's called Big Twist Value. Nothing special. So I'm currently in the middle of sprints, but I had to pick out my book club pick for May because I haven't done that yet. And so I thought I would take you along with me to figure out a good book to pick that features a serial killer in it. Also really quick, an update on the book. I also put on my glasses because I've just been having issues. The book, The Butterfly Garden. First off, this is not a spoiler because we find out pretty early on what the serial killer does to these girls, okay? In this book, this man, he calls himself the gardener, okay? He lives in this mansion, has this garden that's full of abducted women, girls, first off. And then on their 21st birthday, you know what he does to them? He's already tattooed this ginormous butterfly on their back. On their 21st birthday, he gets them this nice dress, they put it on, and then he has this clear box. I'm assuming it's like glass or something. He puts them in there and fills the box up with reason and that's how he preserves their body like a real effing butterfly. Are you serious right now? Are you? Could you imagine? And so like these FBI agents at the very beginning of the book, like they have these boxes of women just lined up in the hall of the place so they can try to identify who these women are so they can contact the family and do like an actual burial. Are you serious, right? Like that is so, you know, out of the box. 
<laughs> pun not I mean I'm glad it's fiction because I don't know I mean people could be crazy like this the amount of times that I'm just like <laughs> while reading okay so I really need to get let me scoot my chair over. I really need to find a good serial killer book. I don't even know like off the top of my head of any books that feature a serial killer. Is that, what about this one right here? We have a Killer's Mind. A Killer's Mind is her playground. Three Chicago women have been found strangled. Okay, embalmed and posed as if still alive. That is definitely serial killer vibes. So this is an option. This one, all that is mine, I carry with me by William Lenday. I read Defending Jacob by him and I really loved it. A mother vanished, a father presumed guilty, there is no proof. That doesn't sound like it's gonna be. Delta County by J.L. Hyde. I heard this is really good, which is why I bought it. Um, <laughs> That's sounded so stupid. Obviously, if I hear it's bad, I'm not gonna buy it. <laughs> Who says you can't go home? The greatest days of Heather Matthews' life have taken place in Delta County. Unfortunately, so have the worst. Ten years after an unspeakable tragedy took the lives of two people she loved the most, Heather returns to her hometown for a class reunion with her high school sweetheart, who is her new husband. Okay, I don't... I don't think this is gonna be. The Hunter by Tanya French. So I have been talking a lot lately, especially in videos about me really loving detective type books. And I have yet to find another booktuber that I can relate to in that sense. Cause a lot of people won't even give the book a shot if they know if it's a detective type book. But I've been finding a lot of comments of viewers or you guys, it's, it sounds so weird to say viewers. But you know, people watching the videos uh, comment recommendations for me, which thank you, but also that they love these types of books as well, which is so fun, so cool, so fresh. We could read them together, but this is definitely one that has been recommended to me. So it's a blazing summer when two men arrive in a small village in the west of Ireland. One of them is coming home, both of them are coming to get rich, one of them is coming to die. Okay, I don't know. This doesn't sound like it could be a serial. It could be, but I'm not f for sure. So I don't want to pick it and then it not be. I might just go with this one. I might just go ahead and go with this one as our May book club's pick, A Killer's Mind. If you want to join me and my book club on Fable, May, we're reading A Killer's Mind by Mike Omer. Reading sprints are over. They actually have been over for a little bit now. I've just been sitting here drinking some lavender chamomile tea because my anxiety is at its peak at the moment. I feel like I am nine months pregnant and I cannot breathe. It literally is taking me back. It's taking me, actually I love, I was gonna say it's like giving me PTSD, but I really wanna be pregnant again. <laughs> I shouldn't say that because I like my, you know, whatever, like my patience <laughs> is being stretched, but it's fine. Anyway, let me go ahead and catch you up on the amount of hours that I am currently sitting at. Seven hours and 46 minutes left to go in this beautiful readathon. I'm definitely going to be finishing the Butterfly Garden today and then I'm gonna dive into I think the chestnut man it's my book club pick for this month and I still haven't read it yet and it's almost over definitely need to do that so anyway let's talk about the book the butterfly garden this let me set the scene for you first first off the gardener the gardener has been doing this for 30 plus years he abducts these women he has multiple at a time like not one two three he has a plethora I'm gonna assume like 10 to 15 at a time. And then once they hit their 21th birthday, 21th? <laughs> once they hit their 21st birthday, sorry about it, girl. But this is, this is what really gets me. He lives in this mansion with who? His family. His family. He has a wife. He has a son, which we find that out pretty early on. But he also has a wife. But his wife is clueless. I cannot wait to see this unfold. And I, it, we still don't know what happened. We still don't know what happened to how the FBI found out about this place. And girly pop Maya, the main chick that we're getting like her perspective, has serial killer vibes in the sense that she has no empathy to me as I'm reading this. And I get she has had a hard life. Okay, I get that. But this girl has zero, zero empathy. There's one part of the book she was like, there's just one thing that could, I could never give him, talking about the gardener, and that's fear. So this whole time she's seeing all this stuff go down, watching these girls die, and she's like not even afraid. She's like, I'm over here basking, you know, in the sun, in the garden, eh. Like she, 
a girl what? And she's slowly telling her story of both her background of like what happened when she was six years old. Like she doesn't even cry. And she will tell you the last time that she cried was when she was six years old. Um, so these FBI, I mean, I mean to look, I meant to look up book two because this is a series. So does book two, is it the same two FBI agents? I'm going to look that up because I'm curious. But uh, anyway, I'm having a good time. No, I'm not. <laughs> but I cannot wait to see what unfolds. And honestly, this is what I hope happens. I hope the wife finds out and she sets the fucking house ablaze. And she's like, try that motherfucker. You know what I mean? That'd be really cool. But I guess we'll see. I'm gonna go continue listening to this. I'm gonna go make some cubby cakes, some fry some pork chops on up. See if my kids won't go to bed early tonight to give me a break. So I'm done with the butterfly garden, let's talk about it. In this book, when this book started, I was already like interested. I was ready to go. The back of the book, book sounded really good. I was ready to dive into it and I was enjoying it. The only thing that I was, wasn't was really enjoying per se was the main girl character. I just didn't like her, I don't know, attitude. We do find out later on towards the end, at the end, why she was responding the way that she was responding that plus the trauma that she was going through in her past. But then the story, it was really good. I really enjoyed how the story was told because it was these FBI agents. We were getting some of their perspective, not a lot, but some of their perspective. They were sitting on one side of the table. Maya was sitting on the other side and they were just writing down the events that happened from the moment Maya got abducted to the release, okay? Plus Maya went into some of her background as well. Was it pointless? A little bit because like, but whatever, it's fine. I digress. <laughs> Maybe the author threw her background in there just so you could have sympathy for Maya, even though Maya didn't have any sympathy for you. Okay, so part one was good. Part two was good. There was something that occurred, I think it was either at the end of part two or at the beginning of part three, that really fuck me up not gonna lie it really fucked me up i was reading this and i'm pretty sure my jaw came unhinged because i was like what you know what i mean like that kind of thing really fucked me up it was really dark so <laughs> trigger warnings all of them then the ending came okay the ending came and i was really wanted to go you know out with a bang Honestly, this is what I really wanted. This is not what happened. Nowhere near <laughs> what happens. But I was really hoping that like, you know, when the FBI came to like <laughs> down the place, all they would find is the gardener in a glass box filled with resin. Like the wife put his ass in there and then she done hauled ass. That would have been really epic and cool, but that didn't, that didn't happen. Um, instead, it was a very far-fetched ending. It was a very like, be so fucking for real right now ending. Okay, is that a trope? It should be. I'm gonna let it simmer, let it marinate. Okay, so now for my last book, because I have five-ish hours left, I'm gonna find a book on my Kindle because I really want to just like sit back, relax, and chill. And I normally like to read in bed or on the couch with a Kindle because the Kindle hurts less when you drop it on your face. <laughs> You're gonna get more comfortable when reading from a Kindle versus a book. I did start this book last night. I think I read like two pages, not nothing, not a lot, but I'm not gonna continue this book with this readathon. So I'm gonna go on here. <laughs> I just can't teach. <laughs> words i can't speak today okay i'm gonna go on here and try to find some i wish ali hazelwood's books were on kindle unlimited i do have the book by her that i want to read which is love theoretically but i don't feel like reading a paperback right now i kind of want to read on my kindle oh somebody recommended a not so me cute today that's on kindle unlimited isn't it i'm gonna go see if that's on kindle unlimited that's what i'm gonna start tonight and i probably won't update you again until tomorrow so sleep tight babe <laughs> so cringy it is officially the last day of the readathon and i do have hours left to go so i have almost four hours left into this readathon so we're definitely gonna finish it and successfully hit the 24 hours before the four days is up but i just want to put it out there if you joined me in this readathon if you're in the discord or if you're silently joining me and you haven't reached your 24 hours by the end of the fourth day that is fine we're, it's not a competition you're still getting your participation trophy like it is completely fine and just look at it this way if you happen to join me next round which will be in june it's just 
something like you can just use that as something to beat in the next round, you know, whether it be 30 minutes more, an hour more, or whatever. You know, this is just our test round. We got this, okay? So, that being said, I started a book last night, and it's a Megan Quinn book called A Long Time Coming. No, it's not. <laughs> It's called a not so meat cute. So listen, let me rewind a second. I've read one Megan Quinn book before and it was a long time coming. And did I read this book because the title is a Taylor Swift lyric? Yes. Did I love this book? No. There were a lot of things in this book that kind of was like, mm, really? I hated the main female character first off. The male character was, I got the burps. The male the male character was pretty good. Anyway, I think I gave like three, 3.5 stars. Going into this one, I guess I should have did my homework. I didn't. I just jumped the gun. I did not think this was the same, like this was part of the same series. Otherwise, I would not have picked it up. It is part of the same series because it is about Breaker's brother, Huxley. Breaker was the male main character from the book that I had already read. Anyway, so Huxley, Breaker, and their other brother own this really successful like corporation situation. Like they're millionaires, okay? Huxley has goals, babe. He might be 35, but he's still young. He's still ambitious and he's got goals. He is trying to get this, these property pieces, these pieces of property from this man who um, has these properties. <laughs> I don't know business stuff. Anyway, so he tries to like get this deal. The man turns him down and leaves. And his brother's like, it's because you're too flashy, too showy, to like look at my money type thing. He's like, look, you're even wearing a grossly expensive watch. You're gonna have to tone it down. You're gonna have to get on that man's level. Even though that man is also a millionaire, that man is a humble situation I guess. So he's going out for lunch to pick his brother some food up and he bumps into that man and that man is with his pregnant fiance and so Huxley is like let me do this so I can be on the same level with this man and lies to him and says yeah I have a fiance too and she's also pregnant. Twinning! And the fiance of that guy's like yes then come over Saturday I'd love to meet her you know blah 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 blah. And so Huxley really wants this deal babe but did you know Huxley is not in a relationship? Nay, nay. Huxley doesn't even have a female friend. Huxley has three days to find someone to pretend to be his fiance and also pretend to be pregnant, which I don't know how the author is gonna make that work because if she pretends to have a miscarriage, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about that. But anyway, so our female main character, oh man, the prologue of this book was a joke. I would have DNF'd it during this prologue had somebody not said that this book was five star worthy for them. So I'm just gonna give it I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> I'm gonna hope for the best because this prologue was the stupidest thing I have ever read. Anyway, she got fired from her job and Angela, her old boss, is dating her ex-boyfriend and Angela also is putting together their class reunion that Lottie has to go to. So now Lottie has one month to find a new job and find man candy because you can't show up at the reunion jobless single with Angela there. Anyway, long story short, her and Huxley bump into each other and she's like, I'm looking for a rich husband. And he's like, I'm looking for a pregnant fiance. So they decide to meet up at Chipotle to like go over details. It's like a fake dating situation. That was a lot of explaining to do, but I hope you got the point. <laughs> I am 11% into this book. I do feel like I'm not going to finish this book within the four hours, okay? Because I'm not that fast of a reader. I googled it though. I'm not a slow reader because I was like, damn, I'm really slow. Some people be finishing books in three hours. I must be hella slow. It's taken me eight hours to finish a book. No, that's actually average. I read at the average human rate, okay? If you are finishing books in like two, three hours, you, my friend, are a superhero. You have superpowers. <laughs> My battery's about to die, so I'm gonna go get some reading done and I'll catch up with you in a minute. So this guy is something else. So yesterday in this book, yesterday when they were at Chipotle doing like the whole what they each other needs and try to come up with the situation, whatever, Lottie winds up backing out. She's like, you know what? No, I really can't be someone at someone's beck and call when I really need to be finding a job. So I'm going to have to take these chips and I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to jet. Thanks for the extra guac though. And so she leaves. 
Well, later on that day, he sends her flowers and the little paper says, please reconsider. Because, like, he really needs this. Because if he tells this man that he actually lied about having a fiancé, it can really ruin his company's reputation. He's like a big, uh, what is it called? Real estate type company is what he has. And anyway, so she never recall calls him back. He leaves his phone number on the little card. She never calls him back. So the next day, he's like, I'm gonna have to play dirty. I'm gonna have to play dirty. So he shows goes up at her house, okay, knocks on her door. She's like, mom, I got it. So she answers the door in like pajamas, essentially, hair up in a messy bun. And he says, hey, babe, I've missed you so much. And he has like a box of chocolate. And she's like, what the fuck are you doing here? And then like her mom comes out from back and she's like, who is this? And he's like, hi, I'm Huxley. I'm her boyfriend of three months. <laughs> And so, like, long story short, he then, he said, she says, like, what, what's going on? What do you think you're doing? And he says, playing dirty. I tried to play nice, but you didn't want to. So, here I am now playing dirty. And she says, what makes you think I'm going to play along? And he says, because I know you don't have a job. And you don't want your mom to know. <laughs> That's definitely, it's definitely playing dirty. I really like that these two characters have some sort of like sassy personality, especially her. I don't think it's gonna be hate to love, but I think it's gonna be like, they're gonna be pretty sassy to each other. I, I will tell you, I was really skeptical with the prologue because I think that's an, it was absolutely ridiculous. Like, I'm not gonna lie. But so far, I, I could really, I am only 18% in though, but I could really like this book. So we have officially hit 24 hours of reading. I cannot believe it took me four days. I was so confident at the beginning of this that I would have an entire day left over. I was like, I'm gonna finish this 24 hours in three days. It's gonna be so okay. It's six o'clock, 6 p.m. and I finally finished the 24 hours of reading. Now I'm not finished with the book. I am gonna finish the book before I completely wrap this video up because I don't wanna leave you guys hanging, you know, with my thoughts and opinions on that, but I will tell you that I have got to 61%, so that's really good, I guess. I'm really enjoying the book. I am enjoying it more than I thought I was going to when I first started reading it because the prologue itself, like the scene where she was getting fired was just so out of pocket. I was like, this is not my vibe. <laughs> But later on in the book when Huxley actually got to meet Angela, who was the woman who fired Lottie, he even said, this girl is wild. It's like she literally stepped out of the Legally Blonde movie. That's how she acts and that's how that prologue scene felt. Like that out of pocket. <laughs> Other than that, I'm really liking their banter and the tension and just like, he's a grump. I wouldn't say she's a sunshine, but she's a ball of sass and they just, they work well together, okay? And they're trying to both, I guess, help each other without even realizing they're helping each other. But like they're also, they are also helping each other with realizing they're helping each other, but something else on the back burner. <sighs> I hope you understand. Anyway, I'm, I feel like this vlog is gonna be very short. Like I didn't get enough, I don't really film B-roll because I'm gonna be completely honest with you. When I watch other vlogs, if there's a ton of B-roll, I fast forward through it. So I don't really think about filming B-roll because it's not something that I enjoy watching. So I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Whatever. It is what it is. I'm gonna go and finish the book and then I'll come back and I'll wrap this whole situation up. All right, it's time to wrap things up. We have completely finished all the books that we were reading in this vlog and it's been a few days. I had time to think about each book. So let's go ahead and talk about them. The first book that I finished was Funny Story by Emily Henry and funnily enough I have read 17 books in the month of April. I know this is like one of my best months quantity wise. Uh, quality. This is the only five star that I've read in the month of April. <laughs> I love this book. I love this book with my whole heart. The writing, spectacular. The characters, phenomenal. The way that I connected... What? Do y'all hear that? My children are moving furniture. Please hold. Okay. <laughs> My living room is put back together. So we were talking about books and I think we were still talking about funny story about Emily Henry. I don't remember what I said, but I will say this. I gave it a five star. It is a new favorite of mine. It has solidified the fact that Emily Henry is an author that I will 100% always buy and I most likely will always love, okay? I loved it. It did not surpass Happy Place on my scale of favorites from hers. It is in second place for my favorites, but it's a favorite of mine. 
I loved it. And I just, I love the writing so much. Like, and I love the fact that there was spice in it per se, but it wasn't, it didn't take over the plot. It didn't take over the story. For that, I, appre I appreciate. I just, I love it. I feel like I have learned, especially in the past couple of days, that I am not a spicy girly pop. I don't prefer spicy books. I prefer, I don't know, emotional romances? I don't even know what you would call it because I do, some spicy books can be emotional, but I feel like spicy books are normally written to have a lot of spice in them. So anyway, the next book that I read was Reckless, which here's an example. So I read Reckless and I should have known going into it automatically what it was going to be because I had read the three books previous to this one and they were all chock full of smut you know what I'm saying and so I read Reckless and I did love it I gave it a four star I really did the only complaint that I had with Reckless was I felt like their relationship was too easy and in real life that's what you want in real life you want easy you want to just like fall into it you know but in a, in a book for me I want the tension I want the angst I want to see them I don't know I just felt like they just fell into it really quickly and really easily good for them good for winter okay because they did connect to winter on such an emotional like level but then it was like once the banging commenced you know after their one night stand it was just that <laughs> once they started like that it was just that that's what it was it just took over the book and I was just like okay <laughs> I get the point you like to fuck let's move on and then I also I also read another romance book we'll jump to that really quick I read a not so meet cute by Megan Quinn this one I gave three stars okay because this one was also like once they started banging like it took over the whole book and I was just like I I've had enough can we like get on like I know there's gonna be a third act breakup because you got together way too soon in the book like let's go <laughs> I don't know what it is but I'm just uh, that's why I say I feel like maybe I'm not a smut girly pop and maybe I need to start looking at other options when it comes to romance like more of like a literary romance instead of is there a word for like is it smut am I saying it wrong am I offending someone I don't really know <laughs> But also in A Not So Meet Cute, I was loving it. I was like laughing and loving the banter and the tension between the characters. And I'll admit, there was a hallway scene that occurred that I was here for. But then again, once the banging started happening, that's just what we were reading about for 40% of the book. I got to the point where I was just skimming through because I'm just, I just want so, the story, okay? And then there was the third act breakup what had happened. Not saying that he should have like started hollering and stuff. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying is old girl was literally gonna give up everything. She like loved him and was willing to just let that all go because he was so upset because what happened could literally ruin his billion dollar business. It could ruin his brother's business and it can ruin his entire reputation, okay? So that is something definitely to be super upset about, okay? So I'm not gonna like say that he was in the wrong for being upset. Sure, he could have handled things a tad differently, but she could have as well. She could have been like, yo, this is some serious stuff. We need to figure this out. You need to calm the fuck down. I don't know. Instead, she just started crying and hauled ass. And I'm thinking like, I don't know. I didn't like her. And I should have known better because I have read another Megan Quinn book and I hated that heroine as well. Is it heroine? I don't know. The female main character. I don't know romance terminology. Obviously, I'm not a romance girly. <laughs> I don't know what I am obviously because I I don't know if I'm even a thriller girly anymore because I read Butterfly what is it called the butterfly garden by Dot Hutchison and as I was reading this I was like first I couldn't really get into it I was like I didn't like the main girl character I felt like she was very emotionless emo what she was very like she wasn't empathetic what is the word am I trying to say she showed no empathy she was very like blah these horrible things were happening to her and she was just like going along with the fucking rock and sure we get to the end and we find out something that was absolutely freaking ridiculous the ending in this book was the dumbest ending I have ever read from any thriller ever and that my friend says a lot okay <laughs> obviously it wasn't getting the five star but then there was just a lot of things that didn't make sense so one thing like with the synopsis of the of the book you know that this man has this you know greenhouse that he's keeping these women in it never really describes it fully to know like where are the sleeping quarters how does like is it connected to a house as well because I didn't think greenhouses have 
like an actual, like, I don't know. There's like sleeping quarters. He has over 20 women at a time. Plus there's like other rooms. There's like a playroom for his psychotic son. There's a room for them to eat in. There's like, it's a whole house, but like, it's just described as a greenhouse. So that didn't make sense. And then also he's been doing this for 30 plus years. Okay. And so he's been killing women, has all these women displayed in a hallway. So it's gotta be like, he embalms them, puts them in reason and he like displays them in this hallway. So the hallway itself has to be gigantic because I'm assuming there's like 50, 60 women in there. I don't even know. Like it just, it just felt like, you know when you read a fantasy book and there's no world building? There was no world building when it came to the greenhouse of this book. Like there's, she didn't give us nothing. She just said hallway. And there's also honeysuckle in the hallway. I don't know. And then there's also a kitchen where the, and then you also have like your embalming room where he does the embalming and stuff. He's got to store all these glass cubes and like, I don't know, it just didn't make sense in that. But then also at the same time, he also was married to a woman who lived in his house, his wife, and he's been doing this for 30 years. He even sleeps some nights in the greenhouse. I'm telling you what right here right now, if we had a greenhouse outside and one, my husband always was at said greenhouse for hours. My husband's also spending a lot of nights at this greenhouse. We're getting really random shipments of resin to this greenhouse and like formaldehyde and stuff to this greenhouse and food. I'm, does she not even look at their bank account? Are you that dense? Did you never once in this 30 years of marriage go and be like, let me go see what the fuck my husband's up to. She either knew and was just being a dumb bimbo bimbo. I don't even know. The book didn't make no damn sense. Like once you think about it. At first so I was like, it's gonna get a four star. But then I was talking about it to my husband and as I, as I was saying these things out loud, I was like, because I can't tell you some other things that bothered me because of spoilers, but yeah, I was like, what? Well, this cannot get no, this cannot get a four star. So then I bumped it down to a three, but then I was talking more about it and I was like, no, this is, just because there's dark themes in it doesn't make it a good thriller. It was a boring thriller. There was no action in this thriller at all. Dark themes, but also like artsy. Make it make sense. I don't really know. Anyway, I gave it two stars and I will be unhauling that book. And please don't come at me because I know it is a well-loved thriller. <laughs> don't come at me. Okay, so that is it. That sums up my 24-hour read a, read a, read-a-thon slash vlog. I will be doing this... <sighs> I will be doing this again in the month of June. The dates haven't been set quite yet. So if you want to participate in that, go ahead and check out the links down below for the Discord and stuff. Anyway, that is that. I'm going to let you guys go because I'm just rambly. I've had too much caffeine today. Let's not talk about it. I hope you guys have a phenomenal day and I'll see you next time. Bye.